Hi, my name is Danny Brown. I'm the CEO of Myriad Real Estate Group, and this is going to be my March market update. Since the last video I did, a lot has changed. There's been a lot of economic data that has come out. We had a record-breaking jobs report where over 500,000 jobs were created in the month of January. No one saw this coming. Uh, I think industry consensus was it was gonna be around 180,000 jobs. And the most bullish case was around 380,000 jobs. And we created over 500,000. So because of that information, uh, mortgage rates went up a little bit. They had bottomed at 5.99%. And then the jobs data came out and they went up a little bit. Then we had the inflation report come out from January into February. And while inflation has still con continued its downward trend, it didn't cool off as much as people were expecting. So that really caused mortgage rates to pop. So right now we're hovering around the 6.75, 6.8% uh, range for mortgages, still below their highs, which were, was seven and a quarter. Um, the good news is when rates fell down to 5.99, the market really found some balance. We saw a huge influx of buyers into the market, uh, purchase applications rose. So I've been stating for a long time that the market is looking for 5% rates. So it was really refreshing for me to see that 6% rates really bought, brought a lot of buyers back to the market and brought some stability. So with higher rates, we're seeing that trend kind of reverse and a little less buyers in the market. We've seen a drop off in purchase applications for mortgages. So there is some shock that has resonated through the buyer market with these higher rates. The biggest thing that we are paying attention to, like everybody else, is the rate of inflation. And the one indicator that has not been reflected in the numbers yet is rent. Rent makes up a huge part of what's called the consumer price index. And that is one of the numbers that the Fed is paying very close attention to and how inflation is calculated. So rent is a, a huge lagging indicator and rents while we see in real time have come down off their highs and have come down quite a bit, it hasn't been quite reflected in the CPI data yet. And so I think once that happens, we will see inflation really start to come down and I'm hoping it comes down aggressively. And if that happens, we will see mortgage rates follow as well. Here in Phoenix, inventory continues to come down. So typically in the springtime, we see a huge influx of new listings, people wanting to sell, wanting to move during the springtime. Well, we're not really seeing that in the market. In fact, we are actually seeing uh, our inventory drop every single week. So a couple weeks ago, we had just over 12,000 homes on the market. Then shortly after that, we had like 11,900, and now we're down to just over 11,000 homes on the market. So that trend is continuing, and if you figure there's not a lot of forced selling, not a lot of people are super motivated to sell their home when their interest rate is fixed for 15 or 30 years at a 4% or lower rate. They don't wanna to sell to go into something that's you know hovering around 7%. So because of that, we're seeing a lot of people who might otherwise be sellers not sell their home. Um, so that is continuing to bring inventory down. With inventory being super low and as interest rates hopefully will start to come back down, a little bit of buyer demand creates what feels like a little bit of frenzy. You start seeing multiple offers again on homes that look great and are priced accurately. We saw that happening in real time uh, and we're still kind of seeing it because inventory is so low that when somebody lists a home, it's priced well, super clean, doesn't need any work, it's still garnering multiple offers or multiple parties interested in the home. Uh, so that buyer demand is absolutely there. They're just kind of hanging out because of affordability. They're waiting for rates to come back down so that they can afford those monthly payments. Sellers aren't being super quick to drop their prices. Uh, so there's this, this friction that exists between buyers and sellers right now where sellers want this price up here, buyers need it to be down here, and unless that mortgage rate comes down to make those payments more affordable, they're just not meeting right now. Um, so that buyer demand is absolutely there. And when we start to see mortgage rates fall just a little bit, I think we'll see that buyer demand return. So if you're a seller in this market, it is super important to one, price your home accurately. 
Two, make sure that you're presenting as good a product as you possibly can. So you want curb appeal, you want the home to be clean, and you just want really high-end photos and present a really clear picture of what your home looks like. Other things that you can do is advertise to the buyers that you are willing to buy their rate down. So I've touched on this in some previous videos. I still think that that is a huge uh, thing that sellers can do is pull from their equity or their proceeds of the sale, help the buyer out by giving them concessions towards their closing costs to buy that rate down, making their monthly payment more affordable, and advertise that you're willing to do that. Even working with your realtor or a lender partner to show buyer's agents what that would look like and what you're willing to do. How much in closing costs are you willing to contribute to buy that rate down? And if you did that, what would that translate to into a monthly payment? The reason I recommend doing a rate buy down or contributing towards the buyer's closing costs versus just lowering the price is it takes a lot less of your money to make a big impact for the buyer by buying the rate down than it does by reducing the price. So if you were to you know, give a buyer 10 or 15 grand of your proceeds to buy their rate down, that's gonna have a much larger impact for them than just dropping the price 10 to 15,000. You would have to drop the price pretty significantly to have the same impact on their monthly payment, uh, which is why I think buying a rate down, contributing to their closing costs creates one of those win-win scenarios where you get a higher price for your home, you protect values in the area, and the buyer gets a lower monthly payment. I would start being a little bit more aggressive on offers, especially if the home's been listed for longer than 30 days. Uh, if the home's been on the market for more than a month, I would be more aggressive in the offers that I'm making, uh, asking for closing cost assistance, even coming down on the price, and really kind of beating up on those sellers that have been listed for a while. Uh, other things they can expect is mortgage rates are absolutely going to come down. It's inevitable, inflation will drop, Fed's gonna continue to increase rates, the job market will not be as strong as it is, so those rates are definitely going to drop. So if you can't afford the home that you want right now, then be patient because those rates will come down. I am an optimist by nature, and I was hoping that rates would just be on this straight, steady line, downward trend. Unfortunately, that's not the case. I think that it's gonna be a little bit bumpy, and, but we will eventually get there. So I still think by the end of the year, rates are gonna be in the low fives. So you will also have that opportunity to refinance. Um, and so you know, in this market, I think buyers have a little bit more power, especially for homes that have been listed for a while. If the home is brand new to the market and you really like it and it checks all your boxes and it's really nice and it's priced accurately, be aggressive with your offer in the other way. Give the seller what they want. Don't try to negotiate because odds are if the home is attractive to you, it's gonna be attractive to other people and they're probably gonna end up with multiple offers on it as well. Traditionally, this time of year, we do see a steady increase in listing activity. I don't know that we're going to see that. All trends point to us not as inventory gets less and less. I think it all just hinges on what mortgage rates are going to do. So when mortgage rates fall, you will see more sellers decide to sell because they can you know, trade up or, or get into a home uh, that they want that is also affordable. But until those rates really start to change, I think we're gonna to continue to be in this low inventory environment. Uh, we talked a lot about pricing your home accurately. So if you want more information on pricing your home accurately or how to do it, uh, check out one of my previous videos on that. It's linked below. Don't forget to give this a like and subscribe and we will see you next time.